Hi, it's Dwyer. February 13th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about Saul Alvarez. Let's talk about his next moves. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, Canelo is 33 years old. And what I want people to start considering is the idea that maybe we're in the closing innings. Maybe one of the options Canelo should consider is whether or not to retire. Right, folks? 33 is a special age. Marvin Hagler leaves the sport at 32. I believe Andre Ward leaves the sport at 33. Those are two of the best fighters in recent years. Right? Don't be fooled by the heavyweight division. Heavyweights age more slowly. Also, don't be fooled by people like Arthur Baturbiev. You always have a few guys at the top who are able to linger. Right? Just understand, Arthur Baturbiev has a 100% KO ratio. He's not in there struggling through the late rounds against people like Golovkin, against people like John Ryder, against people like Dimitri Bevel, like Canelo did in three fights that went the distance. What I want folks to also think about, too, is Canelo recently gave a press conference where he said, hey, I don't want to fight Jaime Munguia. Uh, one of the reasons appears to be that Munguia is of Mexican heritage. You know, you can't decide you're not going to fight a nationality unless you're close to the end of your career. Right? Um, it, it doesn't work if you put up some cultural prohibition with years left in your career. I believe the fact that Canelo is openly talking about not wanting to fight fighters of Mexican heritage kind of suggests that he's thinking he only has one or two fights left. Let me also say this, and I don't say it lightly. There was a time when Roy Jones gained weight fought John Ruiz, looked spectacular in the fight, was too fast for the then heavyweight champ, won the title, right, in a jump from light heavyweight. Now, had Roy Jones, who was unbeaten at that time, had Roy Jones stepped away from the sport, I'm just telling you, he would be remembered as one of the absolute greats. He'd be haunting the sport. Right? He's remembered as a great fighter now. But he doesn't have anything close to the image he would have had had he stepped away from the sport right after winning the heavyweight title. Right? Jones could have said, look, you know, Vladimir Klitsch goes out there. These heavyweights are much bigger than I am. I've pushed this as far as I can. I'm going to walk away from the sport. Let me give another example. Another boxing royalty guy. Ray Robinson was the middleweight champ. He decided he had one more fight left in him. So he gained weight. He fought Joey Maxim pretty good light heavyweight champ in someplace big. I think it was Yankee Stadium. Understand, to everyone's amazement, Ray Robinson, in a fight in which the referee had to be replaced because of heat exhaustion, Ray Robinson is beating the light heavyweight champ. But then Ray himself was overcome by the heat and could not continue. Right? Both Roy Jones and Ray Robinson 
continued their careers. I'm just telling you, continuing your career carries a risk. Right? You're no longer Superman, as Roy Jones used to be called. Once you get knocked out by an Antonio Tarver. Right? Once you fall off a bit. Once you lose the title, once you lose dramatically because Father Time is unbeaten, you never get back to the level of consideration where you were. So we remember Antonio Tarver. We remember Glenn Johnson. We remember Joe Calzaghe beating Roy Jones. Right? We remember Gene Fulmer beating Ray Robinson. Right? And others beating Ray Robinson. Understand, when Ray Robinson fights Joey Maxa, right? Ray Robinson, I believe, only lost to the Raging Bull, Jake LaMotta. Now let's talk about Canelo. Let me just say, too, boxing is an unforgiving sport. Folks, it's a young man's game. The one thing I've noticed, too, and it's a constant, is young guys want their chance. They want it earlier than the world's going to give it to them. A young guy then starts looking at the champ, and a young guy, rather than say, wow, this guy's distinguished, you know, rather than the way soldiers look at old soldiers, where... You know, you look at an old soldier and you're thinking, wow, this guy was at Normandy. You know, wow, this guy was behind enemy lines, saving lives, right? You know, doing what he had to. In boxing, young guys aren't your fans. So a big baby will spar with Tyson Fury, will feel, hey, I can take Tyson Fury. Then we'll start calling. The guys ranked ahead of him. Bumps. Right? We'll be firmly convinced that it's just a matter of scheduling as to when he beats off these other guys. Even older fighters with hardly the experience, think Francis Ngannou, right? We'll look at a Tyson Fury and he'll say, what does this guy have that I don't have? Forget the fact that Tyson Fury has spent a lifetime in boxing and Ngannou has just left, you know, MMA. Right then Ngannou doubles down. He looks at Anthony Joshua, two-time heavyweight champion, blessed puncher. And the attitude is, hey, if I have a good night, I can beat this guy. Right? That's boxing. There isn't that overwhelming respect that some other sports have for elders, for current belt holders. So understand the position Canelo is in. Right, let's be blunt here. I feel Canelo is slowing down a bit. Right, he looked good against Golovkin. And keep in mind, I'm someone who felt that Golovkin won the first two fights they fought. Right, he looked good against Golovkin. Then I noticed Golovkin's still around in like the ninth round. Then I'm noticing Golovkin's landing some shots. In fact, Golovkin does better in those late rounds than he did in the earlier rounds. And you're looking at Canelo and you start to think, wow, you know, Canelo looks like he's in his 30s, doesn't he? Right, that John Ryder fight. That was in Canelo's backyard. That fight was in Mexico. Canelo knocks him down. You thought, okay, you know, Canelo is going to finish this guy off or Canelo's going to spank this guy where it's going to be an issue of whether Ryder goes the distance. Uh, that's not the way that fight went, folks. Ryder's hanging in there. Ryder's starting to get encouraged late in the fight. Ryder starts landing hard shots. You realize that
Canelo, who knocked him down earlier in the fight, was unlikely to drop him again in the very late rounds. Now, we'll forget the Jamel Charlo fight because Charlo is on his bike. Charlo is there trying to survive, right? Charlo gets dropped in something like the seventh round. Some fighters would have gotten off the canvas upset. They would have said, look, man, you're not going to embarrass me here. I'm going to go out on my sword. Not Charlo. Right? Charlo looked like a guy who was 154 pounds, fighting one of the champs at 168 pounds. So now you have the deep water. I thought there was a chance that Canelo, in his latest press conference, was going to announce his retirement. That's how some fighters do it. Right? Ray Robinson, excuse me, Ray Leonard, another great held a press conference, Marvin Hagler showed up because Hagler wanted a shot at Ray. And Ray at that press conference, and Ray was recovering from a detached retina. Ray announced that he was not going to fight again. He was not going to fight Hagler. Now, this is boxing. Lord knows we've had guys break retirement promises in the sport. Right? But just understand, Canelo calls a press conference, you thought, wow, the line that wants to fight Canelo is so long and it's so dangerous. And Canelo is looking a little bit older of late. You thought maybe Canelo was going to say, hey, man, Marvin Hagler was a great fighter. Andre Ward was a great fighter. They knew when to leave the stage. I'm going to leave the stage like those guys did. Right? You thought Canelo was going to say, this is a young man sport. I'm not as young as I used to be. I tip my hat to the guys who are out there. I realize that it would take a lot for me to prepare to fight them. I also realize that I could not fight them all. So I'm stepping away to give others an opportunity. Right? Canelo didn't go there. Instead, Canelo said, hey, you know what? I'm not going to fight unbeaten Jaime Munguia. He's of Mexican descent. Right? Canelo has a couple of fights left on his PBC deal. Well, let's answer the challenge here. Let's name five guys who I feel would give Canelo all he could handle. Let me say this. And I consider myself a huge Canelo fan, and I know the Canelo hardcore fan group, just like the Anthony Joshua hardcore fan group, think I have it out for the guy. I don't. Right? Rather, understand, Canelo is one of the box office kings of the sport, just like Joshua. These are the fighters we analyze. These are the fighters we talk about because these are the guys we respect. Right? We'll highlight the great parts of their games. Right? Canelo, you had four champs at 168 pounds, some of them unbeaten. Right? Billy Joe Saunders, unbeaten. Callum Smith, unbeaten. Caleb Plant, unbeaten. And Canelo, like General Sherman, mows through the division, right? Also beats Rocky Fielding. And while he's on his march through 168, he jumps to 175 and doesn't just win. He stops Kovalev, a man who, let's remember, stops Anthony Yard. He stops Kovalev, then returns to 168 to finish his perch of the division. Right, think about it. Billy Joe Saunders stopped. Caleb Plant stopped. Rocky Fielding stopped. In other words, whatever you think of Canelo, in these big fights, he did not leave it up to the judges. And I'm guessing even Callum Smith's family knew by the start of the ninth round that Canelo was going to beat Callum Smith. Smith goes the distance, heroic in going the distance. 
Look, Canelo's a first ballot Hall of Famer. And of course, 168 is really Canelo's second act. Right before then, he was the champ at 154. He was the champ at 160. Beat people like Danny Jacobs. One of my favorite fights is Canelo against James Kirkland. Look up that fight. Right, that's a shootout. Canelo is that guy who, against a slugger, was willing to trade when Canelo thought he had the faster hands. He had the better game. And he was right. Right, so this is a Goliath. But, this is a young man's game. Other guys want to earn their stripes. Right, they're going to swing at the king. So let's talk about five guys who I feel give Canelo all he can handle. I believe some of these guys beat Canelo. In the comment section of this YouTube video, you tell me which guys beat Canelo. The first is David Benavides. Right, folks, Benavides has already been the champ at 168. One of the stories of the Canelo purge of 168 is that he was fortunate. Benavides blew it as champ and lost his title without losing in the ring. So we haven't gotten the Benavides Canelo fight. Right? Understand, Canelo is a master in the pocket. Canelo has a better back foot than Benavides. The problem is do you want to be on your back foot against Benavides? Right? This is a guy who eventually tracks down Caleb Plant. Right? In the pocket, wow, even if Canelo gets low, and I imagine he'd have to get low, Benavides is a guy who can take you out when you're low because Benavides throws excellent low hooks. Let's just say... The clock's ticking on that fight, in part because Canelo's 33, in part because Benavides is starting to look weight drained to me. Let's talk about another guy. Now keep in mind, here, I'm coming at this as a fan of boxing. I'm not even thinking about the box office. Right? I'm just looking at the best fights. Some of the guys I'm going to name here are lesser known. They shouldn't be. Janabek. Folks, he is a unified middleweight champion. Right? This guy, to me, is like Marvin Hagler. Not in terms of fight style, but just in terms of the fact that everyone's overlooking him. Understand, in the early 80s, we were in love with the welterweight division. Right? That had Duran. That had Leonard. That had Hearns. Right, the middleweight division, and that's a historical division. Right, that's a historical division. The middleweight division was overlooked. And it was ruled by one man. I don't care who else had belts. Right, Marvin Hagler was the champ in the early 1980s at middleweight. Well, folks, in 2024... The champ at middleweight is Janabek Alim Kaluli. This guy's unbeaten. This guy's a southpaw. This guy will come in the pocket. He'll take away your rib cage. This guy knows how to bend in such a way where he doesn't have to lift a hand to avoid your punches. Now I know he's at 160. I know Canelo's at 168. I know some are going to say, oh, isn't 168 too big for a middleweight? Not this guy. Right? Janabek to me is major competition or would be major competition for Canelo. Again, he's unbeaten, folks. He's the champ. Unified. At 160. Give him a look. Let's talk about another guy. Now, what's the alibi here? Because this guy's not Mexican. This guy's Cuban. Right? I hope Canelo doesn't start saying, hey, I'm not going to fight Cuban fighters. David Morrell, 90% KO percentage. 
right? He's interesting too because he's a change in the boxing orthodoxy, right? He's not fighting out of New York, Florida, uh, L.A. No, no, folks, this guy's fighting out of Minnesota. This is the Midwest's fighter. He's a WBA champion at 168 pounds. He's unbeaten. He's a southpaw. This is a southpaw era. 90% KO percentage. Moves better than Benavides. Right? To me, it's an open question on who wins. Morrell versus Benavides. I believe Morrell would give Canelo all kinds of problems. Let's name another guy who would give Canelo all kinds of problems. Now this guy's interesting because he's a southpaw who, like Oscar De La Hoya, fights right-handed. He has the best jab of the group. His name is Hamza Shiraz. He's unbeaten. I think his fight style just fits Canelo's fight style. I think he beats Canelo. Right? He has the best jab of the group, and it's his dominant hand. Right now, a young Canelo would be able to bob and weave, fight Joe Frazier, Mike Tyson, Jack Dempsey style. Get inside and land some big shots to the body. Right? This is 33-year-old Canelo. Right? I don't think 33-year-olds have the energy level to bob and weave and get inside. Let's talk about the names I just mentioned. Right, Joe Fraser, Jack Dempsey, Mike Tyson. What did they do after 30? Right, I'm just telling you, ferocious champions. Right, Rocky Marciano, another guy who fought low. When he leaves the game early, he said he was leaving to spend more time with his family. The reality is that Rocky had a bad back at the time. Folks, bobbing and weaving takes a lot of effort. Right? It's tough for an old guy. These young guys are bobbing and weaving. Right? The Mike Tyson, who is having a problem with Kevin McBride, who couldn't get out of the way of some shots, right, had lost his quick twitch bob and weave ability that was just natural for him when he was in his early 20s. Right, Canelo at 33 against Hamza Shiraz, maybe in the early rounds, he might bob and weave and get inside and try to test Shiraz's body. Right, I would say if Shiraz is still standing by round four, you would get a fight like the Bevo fight, where Shiraz would then pull away. Understand, too, Canelo would have a lot to think about because Shiraz is a puncher who is two-handed. He's the two-handed inverted fighter. Let's talk about one more guy, and this guy will be a little controversial because he's coming off a loss. But understand, that loss was to David Benavides. This guy, too, is a southpaw. Folks, he's one of the most advanced people in the sport. And that's Demetrius Andre. Right? Keep in mind, he's a former champ at 154. He's a former champ at 160. Right? Andre's body control, his lean, his ability to be in the pocket but to lean back so you can't reach his upper body, right? That's something that, quite frankly, a Benavides doesn't have. A Janabek doesn't have, right? Understand, too, Andre is having his way in the early rounds against Benavides. Punching power is a beautiful thing. Benavides starts landing heavy shots, right? Understand it takes heavy shots to dampen Demetrius Andre. 
right? If you aren't able to land the heavy shots, and this is a master at ring coverage and movement, if you're unable to land the heavy shots against Andre, he can make you look extremely bad. Now, those are the five guys who I think would give Canelo a handful. Let me name them again. Benavides, Janabek, Morel, Shiraz, Andre. Right? Let me just say, for me personally, since I would expect Given his box office pull, and it's prodigious, I would expect Canelo to be the favorite, odds-wise, in all of these fights. And I would consider each of these five guys, for me personally, to be the betting side of the play. Right? I don't know how. Canelo would be able to stay in the pocket against Benavides. I believe Janabek is more athletic than Canelo. I know David Morrell is more athletic than Canelo. I believe Shiraz, folks, this is a Larry Holmes, Thomas Hearns level jab. Right? For me, that fight would not start until Canelo showed that he'd be able to get by Shiraz's jab. Folks, that might never happen. Let me just say, too, Andre, you know, I hope, I hope people have amnesia because of the Benavides stoppage. Right, folks, Andre is dangerous. Right, when I look at Andre, just like when I look at Chris Eubank, and I'd love to see Eubank against Canelo, right? I see an advanced fighter, someone who would give Canelo all kinds of trouble. Now, let's talk about a guy who did not make my list because I understand he's on Canelo's list of people Canelo's considering. And that's the hitman, 33-year-old Jamal Charlo. Folks, let's be blunt. Charlo has only had three fights since December of 2019. Three. His last fight, well, let's just say, he's only had one fight, one fight, since June of 2021. Right? One fight since June of 2021. And that fight was against Benavides' brother, Jose, who Terrence Crawford has beaten. Right? Let's do the math. Crawford's a welterweight. Right? Benavides has gained weight. I think it was about his third fight at 160 pounds when he fought Charlo, who was coming off a more than a year layoff. And Charlo was able to get the decision. Right, folks? I'll be disappointed if Canelo fights Charlo. Let me just say, I'm hoping Canelo decides one of two things. Either he takes the Joe Calzaghe approach and decides, okay, I'm about to leave the sport. Let me fight some great fighters so the fans will know where I stand versus these great fighters on the way out. You might recall Joe Calzaghe fights Roy Jones, a fight that was overdue, and fights Bernard Hopkins on his way out. Right? Either he should take that approach or Canelo should say, okay, look, I'm just going to leave the sport right here. Right? If he wants a ceremonial fight in front of, you know, friends and family at his favorite venue, okay, we'll give him a freebie. Right? He can fight whoever he wants as a farewell fight. But what he shouldn't do, 
in my opinion. And yes, I'm whining here. Right? Yeah, I'm whining. I'm being disagreeable. What he shouldn't do in an era where you have Benavides, Janabek, Moreb, Shiraz, Andre, when you have real competition, guys who might actually beat him, when there's a question as to who would win those fights, I think it's the wrong move to fight a guy who's only had one fight since June of 2021. Right, folks, it's 2024. Right, if Canelo has a fight in May against his next opponent, that would be almost three years since Jamal Charlo had the fight before his recent fight, right? Where he weighed more than his opponent, who, you know, might not be world-class at 160, right? So um, let's just say Canelo has some hard decisions to make. Sooner or later, a fighter is going to retire. That fighter could retire on his own or the sport could retire the fighter. Right? By the sport retiring the fighter, I mean, you know, the fighter gets beaten uh, and then moves on. Right? Vladimir Klitschko. Great fight. Great fight against Anthony Joshua. Uh, knocks down Joshua. Right? Looks good at times in that fight. Knocks down Joshua. In my opinion, should have finished Joshua. Might have underestimated Joshua a bit. Had his brother, another heavyweight champ, in his corner, and they were talking during the fight. Look at the tape about, you know, Joshua tiring and stuff like that. Joshua gets a second win. I don't believe Vladimir Klitschko has been in the ring since. Right? You can retire that way or you can hold a press conference. Thank everyone for coming. Or not even hold a press conference. Just tell people, hey, it was a great ride. I'm done. Right? But, on the way out, either come strong or don't come at all. Either fight future Hall of Famers like Roy Jones. Well, now they're actual Hall of Famers, right? But future Hall of Famers at the time, Roy Jones, Bernard Hopkins, and then wave and say, that's it for me. Um, you know, you're always going to have guys who you don't fight. Right? Joe Calzaghe leaves the stage never having fought Carl Frotch. Right? Understand. You're not going to be able to fight everyone or you'll be fighting until you're 65 years old. Right? Canelo needs to decide, okay, am I going to come strong or am I going to walk away? Right? We don't want to hear excuses and explanations. For me, hearing, hey, I'm not going to fight a Latino, that's a little disappointing. <laughs> that's that's extremely disappointing. You know, uh, I don't want to hear that. I'd rather hear, hey, I'm going to take on Benavides. Right? You know, uh, I'll take on Jaime Munguia. Whoever he wants to do, you need to come strong or not come at all. If the opponent is Jamal Charlo, right, folks, I'm just telling you, this is a young man's game. Right? I'm not sure if fans really believe that Jamal Charlo belongs in the sentence with the fighters I just named. Right? You know, um, all I can say too is it's a little bit stunning to me that there's so much talent out there. Right? Janabek fought Galtieri to become unified at middleweight. Right? Shiraz is out there. And you mean to tell me Eubanks out there 
And you mean to tell me that Jamal Charlo, who's been champ for a few years, hasn't fought these guys, right? His big fight was against who? The Revianchenko, right? Hasn't fought even Golovkin, right? To me, that looks like a protected fighter. By contrast, Benavides has fought Caleb Plant, has fought Demetrius Andre, right? Has fought others, David Lemieux, right? To me, if I'm Canelo, it really comes down to, am I going to try to further my legacy? Or am I just going to leave with the legacy I have? It's a Hall of Fame legacy. People understand this is a young man's game. I'm hoping Canelo doesn't take a different route and tell us he's fighting Jamal Charlo. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let me say this too. I know some people are going to say David Morrell only has 10 pro fights. I know some other people are going to say Hamza Shiraz just beat Liam Williams and there's a big gap between Liam Williams and fighting Canelo. Right, folks? Styles make fights. <laughs> I'm just, you know, let's just cut through it here. Styles make fights. If you're looking on film and you see mobile power like Morrell has, you see one of the sport's best jabs like Shiraz has, and you start asking yourself, gee, how would Canelo deal with Morrell's legs? How would Canelo deal with Shiraz's jab? Right, to me, those are the deciding factors. Right, I believe each of these five men that I've named here give Canelo a whale of a fight. Right, I'll concede. It's hard to match the resume of any guy who shows up, beats four champs, unifies at 168, beats the champ at 175, has already fought another champ at 175, Bevel, goes the distance against Bevel. Okay, look, we understand. Canelo has a great resume. Fought Cotto, fought Mayweather, fought Danny Jacobs. Okay, okay, great. Styles make fights. Age also matters. Some of these young lions are ready to invade Canelo's part of the forest. Let's see what he does. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear from you. Who do you believe Canelo should fight? Right? I'll give Canelo credit. Uh, he's certainly a champ who has pushed himself, right? Fought Bevel. You know, that's after already fighting Kovalev, right? He certainly has pushed himself. He's fought unbeaten fighters in the past, right? He's fought some great fights. He's fought so many great fights, I haven't even mentioned Arislan Lara, right? That's a great fight. Austin Trout, right? He's fought major opponents, right? Canelo, keep that legacy going if you're going to stay in the uh, in the fight game. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section here. Thanks for stopping by.